part of my rant today um, is talking about how the experience um, that these guys had, especially Malcolm, differed from when I cornered and I've seen it um, in the past. Um, I've coached other Canadian fighters in the UFC like Mitch Gagnon, uh, I've, uh, Antonio Carvalho. So being with them and now here with Malcolm during this COVID time, there's been such a big difference on how the experience is. And to me, I feel like this COVID time and the new guys coming in, they're not getting that experience that you know, they should be getting. When you get to the big leagues, when you get to the UFC, you want these big moments. You want to see fans. You want to get that, you know, experience of people wanting to take pictures, get autographs signed. And, you know, so going back, and when I was with Mitch and Antonio, the Fighters Hotel was probably one of the coolest things you could have experienced. You can't even get into the elevator with, you know, people wanting autographs and pictures and fans crashing the hotel to walking out to 10, 12,000, to up to 15,000 people. I mean, that's those moments you live for in fighting. And I think a lot of these fighters um, now aren't getting that experience. And I think it really tough him i'll bring matt in now but one of the things matt said to me during the fight week it's like it feels like we're hiding and it's it's like literally we had no food service we had to one order uber eats all the time and it was delivered to a table with a security guard walking through the hallways was like you know the walking dead you barely saw anyone it was such a, a different experience uh, from the past and i mean and matt's you know four and oh right now um in mma pro mma three finishes so our goal is a couple more fights for Matt and then we're going to try to get him into the big show but I'm just curious to see you you've been with me in my corner when I went to Japan you were with me you know in Turkey um, in a lot of my big fights you know in LA so you've been around that experience of been fighting in front of you know over 10,000 people with me how did it feel for you um, dreaming about being in the UFC and what you saw? It was it was nothing like that, like yeah. like you said, and like I, I even specified, it's like it's like oh, we were grounded. Every time we <laughs> left the the room, we saw someone at the end of the hall checking our uh, our necklace, our lanyard, make sure we have the right color bracelet on. Oh, did you get tested today? Did you uh, get uh, temperature checked? Making sure that we got a. I mean, how many fighters did we saw see one, two fighters, if yeah, that? Yeah. We saw uh, Curtis Blades and we saw the yeah, Black was, Beast. Yeah, we that's got to it. wave to Derek Lewis from uh, from a distance. Yeah, he said, "What's up, guys?" That, yeah. That's what he said. It that's was just all like we, got. we didn't get. It wasn't like I said. Like it wasn't fun. It wasn't like a lot of people like signing autographs or meeting this, meeting that. Just like, just it wasn't that experience like you were you were stating. So I was like, eh, it's. It is what it is. It's just it's it's now just the profession. Yeah. Like but you're going the, into the office. The big thing is you have to remember is the timing and I get it. It's an opportunity for guys. You're still making money. Um, you still get to fight on TV. And I mean, you got to think the, the viewership in all of these fights have, have gone up in the UFC. But that missing link is just that entertainment. I mean, some of my most memorable moments in fighting was the crowd. And, and, and specifically in Japan, I remember just walking through the tunnel after my fight and just seeing the Japan crowd going nuts and trying to touch you and, and wanting to take pictures. And like, that's the experience a lot of times you live for, to fight for, that gives you that energy. So I think these guys are getting robbed from that real experience that like you dream of like you dream of the loud cheering you dream of jumping on the cage and celebrating and you kind of lose those moments so I'm hoping really that these guys who've dedicated their whole lives get that full experience and I hope you know even with crowds coming back we can have it but it's just a, a to me a frustrating experience because like I said there's no excitement to fight week it's dead it's flat um, there's no excitement at all. I mean, and I also went to Fight Island. Um, and Fight Island was a totally different experience for me. I found Fight Island because, you know, everybody was in that 1W hotel, which, you know, all the teams, you got to interact more with the other coaches, you saw more people. But this fight night in Vegas, I think everybody coming in, coming out, we barely crossed paths with anyone. Mm -hmm. So, which, like I said, was weird. Like, I'd walk down the hallway and I think I saw one or two people in the hallway just by chance. So it's just weird to be there and not get that experience. So do you think that affects the fight, though? Do you think that affects like the performance of the fighter at all? I would honestly, the more I think about it, yeah. It I, well, it depends on what kind of fighter you are. Uh, if you rise to the occasion and love when people are screaming and yelling and you and that, that kind of energy like is benefiting you. Good. Doesn't it but add more pressure. Don't you think like the fact that there's people watching adds more pressure, right? Or well, yes and no, but it also, if you are, when you're locked in in a fight, it's, it's all about a mindset. Like, I really don't know who's in the crowd all the time. Like, you just, you, you're in a zone, 
But there are moments in the fight you can still hear. You can still hear your corner. You can still hear the cheering. You can still hear that excitement. So a lot of times when when you're down or, I mean, you have somebody hurt and you hear everybody going nuts, like that extra cheering makes really, you want to get the finish. Yeah, yeah. It excites you more. Of so course, it makes you, you know. A more exciting fighter. That makes sense. And especially since, like, when you get that finish and you get to jump on the cage like a gorilla. Come on. Yeah. Man, it's, 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 it's like, one it's like of your last picture that you put out. <laughs> I love it. It's 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 what it's what you kind of live for. And, yeah. and I'm not saying that like fighters do it mainly for the fans, because obviously you wouldn't go that far in the sport if you were doing it just for the fans. But it's like it's it's part of the fun. It, it's a good it's the experience. I, I love it. Like I couldn't imagine fighting at the apex when no one's around and no one's like cheering for you. It's like, OK, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, I just think of guys like we weren't on a very stacked card that night. I mean, um, usually when you have those big superstars in there, but I think of someone like Conor McGregor. I think of someone you know, like the big names, the John Jones. Like we have Conor McGregor fighting in January against Poirier and they're going to f- probably fight in an empty arena for someone like Conor McGregor, who's used to weighing in with all of these people and and having all that excitement, the crowd. It, it's probably going to feel the difference. Like to me, it 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 wouldn't it didn't motivate me to want to be a fighter again, you know, to to want to get to the UFC. It just to me it seems like it's just not there. Uh, it's just it wasn't that exciting for me and it's even to the point where this is what people need to understand like when it was fight day, we literally got a, a call time to be downstairs. We bring our stuff, we go into one car, so it's not even like you get to go into the bus with the other teams. You walk into your personal car, you get transported in, right into your own change room. You still haven't seen anyone. In your change room, you warm up, and then you pack your bags. You have to pack your bags because once you're done your warm up and it's time to go, they take your bag, you go right to the ring to fight. Next thing you know, right after you walk out, they hand you your bag and you walk right back into your bus and you have to go back to the hotel. How how transactional does that feel? Literally. Like it was it was basically basically like like in a, like if you go to a gladiator ring, you go in, okay, you're done now. Okay, you're out now. We couldn't even enjoy the show. We couldn't yeah. even like stick around. It was Malcolm couldn't even go and shower after. Usually after a fight, you're sweaty, you want to shower yeah. no you go right into the, no you right. go see the right doctor wow. and then you go you leave there's not a time to sit and to reflect and like man look back at like some of my wow. fights like at the some of the best moments you can have is to like finally going back to the change room just to take a deep breath man like man the last time I left this change room, I was so scared. I don't know what's going to happen to me. I think of the worst. I'm, I'm so nervous. This is eight-week training. My life depends on this moment. And then all of a sudden, you go and you get right on the bus, and then you get shuttled back to a room with you and your team. You have to Uber Eats food. There's no partying. There's no celebration. And the best part of any fight night, like, I mean, even glory events. And I was, I've was i been to every almost glory event ever. Yeah, the best part is hanging out bar, in the yeah, lobby, right? Like the lobby. Be chill. Yeah, it was always the best. I mean, yeah. Danny's worked with Glory now for many years. So some of the best moments is at the end, the fighters, the coaches, Everyone the, the production together. crew, the videography you, crew. Exactly, everybody yeah. gets to relax and, and, and have some drinks together and to kind of eat some food. Yeah. That's what fighting is. That's how you build relationships. That's how, you know, the excitement of going to fight week. And I think that's taken you said, away. You said the Fight Island had something like that. that in fight fight Island, Island, yeah, because I guess we had... Because the yeah. W Hotel, I guess, was... But we had the whole hotel. We had our yeah. own bubble. But I don't understand why they didn't do that in Vegas. I mean, I guess a lot of the fighters live in Vegas, so they have the option to stay at home versus the hotel. So there's more in and out. But it's just, honestly, it's it's an experience for me where I hope it changes because... And even, you know, these guys who have come in during this COVID time, I hope that the UFC is able to bring them back to almost give them that real experience because, I mean, they're really getting gypped right now, in my opinion. Opinion. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the excitement of watching sports is watching the fans go crazy, right? And, yeah. and even when you're watching it with with your friends or with your boys, it's all about celebrating together. And when something happens, you just go nuts. And you know, when you take that energy away from the sport, I guess it kind of takes away from the athlete and his experience. And yeah, I can see what you're saying. I'll tell you what, like the best part about it is, especially in the last couple of fights, even though it's a small regional scene, but it's the uh, it's when they come to the the dressing room and they say, okay, it's you, you ready to go, right? Like, okay, they have the they have the radio, okay, he's coming out, Matty Special's coming out. And then as you walk, you're going through like the, the tunnel and yeah. you start hearing, as you get closer, boom, 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 boom. And it starts getting the, the vibration and, and then you start realizing, okay, this is real now. And then when you get to the actual like arena part and then you see everyone as you're walking out, they're screaming and they're yelling yeah. and you're just like, 
this is real. Well, like this is when you know it's 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 on. One of the most unforgettable moments was uh, Collision Two, yeah. with Bato Hari, and I was uh, I was on the side of uh, the ramp where they were where with the, the Moroccans locked. were crushed. And crashing the second in. Bato Hari video came up, like you knew he was gonna walk out. Holy shit! Like holy shit! I'll never forget the amount of people crowding up onto the edge of the the thing with their phones out, screaming their heads off. The energy was so unreal. Yeah. Like, and uh, I can see that. And then you see Bader Hari come out, he's yelling, he's screaming, yeah. he's going crazy. And it's like, it hypes up the fight and it makes it so exciting. And it's know? just, it's crazy to think, you have to think in, when was it? Last year, the end of last year, we had a, a kickboxing event with Rico and Bader fighting yeah. in front of 38,000 30. people. Yeah. I was literally was like fighting for a world title for me. This is my commentary, yeah. like world title. Like I'm creating an open talking in front on a mic in front of 38,000 people. I think people. that's the biggest kickboxing event ever held in history. Yeah. No, I mean I the think, Japan ones Japan in the ones old school days used okay. to have those big, big but like events. half the country of Netherlands watched that. Yeah. Like it was, it's insane. It was so insane, I mean yeah. to have that and then literally one month later go into UFC events and other high level leagues with no one in, yeah. it's totally different.